Hello and welcome to another SciFest Movie Talk episode. In this episode, I'll be discussing Disney's and Pixar's 1999 animated sequel and third overall movie release by the studio, Toy Story 2, as again directed by John Lasseter. Watched again as part of our family film night and as part of our Toy Story movie series. So, serving as a direct sequel to 1995's original Pixar hit, Toy Story, the movie takes us further into the world of what toys get up to when we're not looking, bringing back all of the beloved characters from the first film, Woody, Buzz, Rex, Ham, Slinky the Dog, Bo Peep and Mr Potato Head, just to name a few, and of course, Andy himself. All again voiced by the original actors from the first movie. They are, however, joined by some new characters and of course some new voices to boot. If you thought the first one was absolutely star-studded, then this one tips the balance once again, with the likes of Kelsey Grammer, Estelle Harris, Wayne Knight, Jodie Benson and Joan Cusack all joining in the fun. So, in this movie, Woody, as again voiced by Tom Hanks, is eagerly preparing to go to cowboy camp with Andy, something he has been looking forward to all year. However, Right at the moment they are leaving, Andy accidentally snags Woody um, and basically rips part of his arm off. Um, upset, Andy leaves for the camp without Woody. But not before Andy's mum shelves Woody with the other broken and forgotten toys. Up on the shelf he meets Wheezy, um, as voiced by Joe Ranft, who's, who's basically a lovable squeaking penguin toy, who's missing his squeaker. Also shelved, by Andy's mum after discovering that he was broken. I suppose meaning, as we all do sometimes, to get him repaired, but she never did. Anywho, Wheezy is taken for a yard sale and Woody mounts his own daring rescue once again. Um, he does succeed, however, in, in rescuing Wheezy this time around, but in the process is, is himself stolen um, by the diabolically greedy Al McWigan um, of all Al's toy band, as voiced excellently by Wayne Knight. Turns out, Woody was part of an old puppet-style TV show and is quite the collectible. Other characters are also introduced from Woody's TV show, namely Jesse, um, as voiced by Joan Cusack, Stinky Pete, the prospector, as voiced by Kelsey Grammer, and Bullseye, Woody's trusty steed, um, who are looking forward to coming out of storage and going on display at a collector's museum in Japan. Speed on by his fears of abandonment, um, Woody, although reluctantly at first, succumbs to the idea of actually being in a museum. At the same time, however, Buzz, as voiced again by Tim Allen, joined by Mr Potato Head, um, Rex, Slinker the Dog and Ham, as voiced by um, Don Rickles, was Sean, Jim Varney um, and John Ratzenberger respectively, um, they mount a, a daring and perilous rescue mission across the city uh, to bring back their friend back in time for Andy's return from cowboy camp. Their destination? Big Al's toy van, where they believe Woody has been taken. Ultimately, Woody uh, then comes to the understanding with a nice touch um, that basically rolls are kind of reversed in this film, it's indeed Buzz that brings Woody out of his funk this time around, uh, that rather than rot away in a museum, unloved and unplayed with, he would rather spend whatever time is left with Andy. So, overall, this film, another absolute hit of a movie from Pixar, absolute. Um, who have absolutely surpassed themselves this time, again, in every way following their efforts on the original Toy Story movie. Yet again, they have brought us a story and characters to which we can all relate in, in some form or another, even if it is because we have had one as a child or stepped on one as an adult, um, or in fact, as the lives of the toys parallel things we may have, have actually been through in, in our own lives. It's quite, rare, apologies, it's quite quite rare, of course, to get a sequel that's as good or even better than the original. And 
Although the original movie still has an absolutely special place in my heart and I think still remains as entertaining today as it ever was, Toy Story 2 manages to capture the heart and the feel of the original whilst giving us an even bigger and bolder and brighter addition to the franchise. And if not better than the original, it's certainly on a par with it. The film examines how toys might feel when they start to get forgotten um, by their owners or outgrown and can be quite emotional in this respect, if I'm honest. A toy's very purpose is to be loved um, and played with. So what would happen um, if this wasn't the case? How would a toy react to being left behind? All of those questions are explored throughout the film in, in surprising detail, may I add. One thing that is evident um, from the film is, is the expansion of the number of characters and indeed the overall scope and the world in which the movie is set. No longer are we confined to just a couple of places like Andy's house, Pizza Planet and Sid's house, um, Andy's evil and sadistic toy killing neighbour. This time around we now see the toys interact with the world at large and in fact transect a city in order to save their friend. This time around as well, um, the, the, as well as the original characters and nostalgic toy references, including the Hot Wheels, Speak and Spell, Etch-a-Sketch Trolls, Little Tykes, the Bucket Earl Soldiers again, and Woody's team from the Woody's Roundup TV series, we also get treated to the likes of Mrs. Potato Head, Barbie, and none other than Buzz's arch nemesis, Emperor Zeg. Oh, and just a few more Buzz Light years to boot. The film has a lot more antics from more characters this time around than basically just simply concentrating on Woody and Buzz. Each gets a lot more screen time and more involvement in the overall plot. This time, um, Buzz isn't on his own um, when he embarks on his mission to rescue Woody, which also offers for a different kind of comedy element and a lot more adventurous scenes, shall we say. So, in one scene, um, the toys actually try and cross a busy highway using traffic cones as disguises. It makes for some absolutely hilarious moments. Absolutely fantastic. Also, the banter between Mr and Mrs Potato Head, where, with Mrs Potato Head being voiced by Estelle Harris, um, for the moments that they are together is absolutely brilliant. What I would say, however, um, is that although, yes, the film is funny and has some great moments, some great pop culture references too, including some excellent nods to Jurassic Park and Star Wars, um, definitely watch out for them. I would say that perhaps the film isn't quite as funny as the first. Toy Story 2 it tries to build on a story, I think, in a bigger way than the first, and as such does rely less overall on the comedic elements, I think, anyway. Because of this, to me, it does feel a little slower than the original. It does take a while to provide us with kind of the backstory of Woody and his roundup gang. I'm not complaining, as such as I think the introduction of these characters is amazing. I'm just letting you know what I did feel as I was watching the film. I would say that it perhaps took a little, well, about till halfway through, perhaps, for it to actually get going. However, that's only a really, really minor gripe. Right from the start, you get a feel for just how much the animation has moved on since the 1995 original. And if you've seen my review for Toy Story, um, you will know that I think the animation is still just absolutely fantastic, even to this day. So if you haven't seen the review, please do check it out on my channel. Um, but Toy Story 2, you can see, um, certainly in the opening sequences, that the animators were looking to showcase their work. And especially in one scene where Woody has been repaired um, and given kind of a makeover by, some, uh, by a character called The Cleaner, as voiced by Jonathan Harris, making him look, well, presentation ready shall we say it, it is an absolutely piece an absolutely exquisite piece of animation even if they did actually crib the character from one of their own animated shots 
even the humans in this movie are starting to look a little bit more lifelike. But hey, again, following on my comments in my review of Toy Story, it's not really what the film is about. All of the characters, still very believable and very, very watchable. They remain absolutely enthralling enough to make you believe that once again, that you are really watching them come to life. Interestingly, at the end of the film, if you keep watching, uh, they've included a series of outtakes as the credits roll. I won't go through what each of them are. Um, they're quite funny uh, in their own right. But they do kind of reinforce kind of this belief that these are actually actors in a film rather than just animations themselves, which is quite a clever move um, and clever quite idea, I thought. And certainly amusing regardless. So, overall, um, once again, um, an absolute triumph of a film for Pixar and animation in general. Um, it was absolutely splendidly constructed and again, absolute fun for the whole family. It's simply an excellent film with some great characters, each with more depth and range than the original Toy Story, which to be fair, as a sequel should be, building on the story and the characters from the previous movies in the series. And I must say, in the case of Toy Story 2, it most definitely, definitely did all of these things and more. And all of this from something that I believe was nearly a direct-to-video sequel. What an absolute travesty that would have been. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like on this video. Please do hit that subscribe button. Um, but most of all, please do return to SciFest Movie Talk for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Um, but otherwise, yes, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.